Hey there and welcome back to another Turning Red video. And as you probably know if you follow Disney and Pixar, and keep up to date with all the discourse and discussion regarding their newest releases, you'd probably know that Turning Red, the latest effort by award winning studio Pixar, has been met with a little bit of a mixed response. On one hand, it has a 95% critical score on Rotten Tomatoes, which shows that much like the majority of Pixar's films, it was well received by professional reviewers and entertainment journalists and all those kinds of people. But then, on the other hand, we've seen it have a much lesser audience score than perhaps we're used to for a Pixar film, with it currently, as of writing this, sitting at around 73%. And I mean, that's not terrible, but it is quite the difference in perspective from the professional and the layman's point of view. But ultimately, since it's the layman that usually determines the success of a film by a box office and merch and all that good stuff, I feel like it's an important perspective to try and understand. And honestly, I have read through a lot of the criticism that various different people have had for Turning Red. And for the most part, I understand it. Personally, I enjoyed the film. Was it the greatest Pixar film that's ever been made? No. No, it really wasn't. But was it awful? No. It's not like it reinvented cinema, but they did release a good film that told an interesting story and had some fun and vibrant characters. A good effort that doesn't try to be something that it's not. But I do understand criticism over the writing. And the characters. Questions as to how the plot flowed, or if some scenes and themes were a bit clumsily handled. I can respect those opinions. After all, they are just that. They're opinions. Opinions that examine the elements of the film from a technical or a narrative perspective, and whether they work or don't work. Good or bad. Or somewhere in between. But there's one criticism I've seen a lot recently that does not cover these bases. This criticism is that the film is too specific. It's too niche. Too narrow. And for reference, this is talking about the setting, the script, the narrative flow, the world in which the story is being built, the canvas of the story, everything. Basically everything that's presented to you is being labelled narrow vision. A film that feels like it only really connects with the specific people the story involves and excludes a whole host of other viewers who just can't seem to connect with it on an emotional level. So, just to remind you, the story takes place in 2002 in Toronto and specifically follows 13-year-old Chinese-Canadian girl Mei Lin Li and her group of friends as they come to grips with Mei's new ability to turn into a red panda at will. It also examines her clingy and overbearing relationship with her mother, bullying, boys, puberty, superfans, and repressed family trauma. A whole lot of elements make up this story. It isn't just some silly romp about a giant red panda wanting to go and watch their favourite boy band perform. So, people look at that premise and they say, can't connect, too narrow. And I'll be honest, this pisses me off. And very rarely does criticism of a film piss me off. But this does. And it's not because I'm some diehard fanboy that desperately needs to defend his favourite film because all the mean, nasty reviewers hurt my little feelings. But it's more because I find this specific criticism really stupid and disingenuous. For starters, almost nobody in the entire world can connect with a film in its entirety. Everybody lives a different life and the characters we see on screen are no different. Each one of them has a defined set of parameters by which they live their life. This film's no different, and yet we've seen so much discussion of how these parameters are too narrow, and thus exclude people. But once again, nobody connects with a film or a character in its entirety. I mean shit, look solely at Pixar's other films. Toy Story. Are you a toy? How can you engage with a film that's told from the perspective of a toy if you're not a toy? Have you ever slept in a toy box? Or under a child's bed, not moving until they wake up and leave the room? <laughs> Don't answer that second one. But I'm going to assume that it's probably not. Hell, I mean a big part of the story is almost a metaphor for getting a new sibling. But how could an only child connect to that, am I right? What about Bugs Life? Are you an ant? Probably not. And I'm going to guess that the majority of the people who watch the film have neither been slaves or circus performers. And yet you can still connect with the characters and the world. You connect with the outsider character, with Flick, who doesn't fit in. Or the princess, who has so much responsibility and is struggling with it. Or Dot, who just wants everybody to get along and be happy. Monsters Inc. Monsters, working in a fuel company that's running out of juice and needing to switch to a more sustainable source. 
Hell, considering the way the world has chosen many of its leaders and the complete and utter inaction on climate issues, somehow I doubt the message of that film connected at all. But people like the characters and engage with their personal struggles. Finding Nemo. Fish. Are you a fish? I doubt you're a fish. But it's a father and a son. Bonding. And people connect to that. And honestly, this one's super narrow. And yet people love it. The Incredibles. A broad range of characters, yeah. But in a really narrow setting. What about Ratatouille? Remy's a goddamn rat. But he wants to follow his dream. And he doesn't fit the part, so you connect to that. For God's sake, Wally has to be the least relatable Pixar film ever. And yet he's still beloved. You can connect with his desire to love and to be loved. Most people who watch Pixar films have not lived a full life with their spouse and watched them grow old and die, leaving them elderly and alone. Most people that watch Pixar films are kids and parents. But still, even then you can so easily connect with Carl's struggle to fulfill his wife's dream for her. And what about Inside Out? Riley, an 11 year old girl, moves from Minnesota to San Francisco. Two specifically defined places. Most people do not share her exact experience, but they're able to apply it to their life regardless. Coco is another one that's really, really specific in its reach, and yet it blew up and is beloved the world over, even by those who have no real links to that story. They can still connect with it, and even apply it to their lives. Hell, Soul and Luca are two more examples of really quite specific and narrowly designed stories that are able to captivate the world. And in my opinion, Turning Red is not even close to being one of the more specific Pixar films. And when people say that they can't connect with it because it's too narrow, I just get confused. How do you not, at the very least, just look past those issues? You've done it before. Do it again. I mean, I'm a 20-something Australian dude, and I was able to connect with this film. But I'll just run through some of the more common complaints about how it's too narrow. First up, Toronto. People actually complained about this. Like, what? I'm not from Toronto. Or Canada. But to me, it was literally just another animated city. Another generic animated city. Or was it the specificity of her being a Chinese Canadian in Toronto, rather than the story being set in the city itself? Well, I hate to break it to you, bub, but a lot of cities have Chinese populations. Oh, but you can't connect with her because she's Asian? Too specific? Well, good thing for you, because almost none of the story requires her to be Chinese. You could alter this story easily to make her a black girl who turns into a lion, and you can keep the story. An Indian girl who turns into a tiger, and you can keep the story. A Native American girl who turns into an eagle. I don't know, any girl, any animal, anywhere, any time, any place. It doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, her character's Chinese Canadian, but ultimately, the story doesn't address that as its main plotline, its flavor. So, methinks people are just mad because she ain't white. But moving on, because ultimately, the big plot points of the story are accepting that you need to grow up and move away from hugely codependent relationships with overbearing parents and addressing repressed family trauma. And these are just such general concepts. I mean, we deal with them in Coco as well. So I don't see how people are unable to connect with them on at least some level. And it's the same with the time period. 2002. Who cares? Lucas set in what? The 50s? And The Incredibles is in the 60s. But you can still connect with the characters and the themes. Time period is just added flavour in these films. It shouldn't make or break your experience. And honestly, to me, complaints like this feel like an excuse. You're just adding to it. You're hiding behind the fact that you're struggling to connect with an Asian person or a girl. Because yes, I have seen so many complaints calling this film too narrow that reference the fact that May is a girl and that it deals with girl topics. Like talking about periods and looking at boys. And Jesus, sometimes I wonder, do people realise that 50% of the population have periods? What is with this strange taboo? The way some people talk about it it's like they were forced to take a swim in the local sewerage works. So for one, grow up. It really isn't a big deal. And two, just ignore it if you don't like it. This is one of those additional flavour things that maybe you can't connect with, but somebody else can. So why should it not be put in the film? Once again, not every element in a film is for everybody. 
Some are for specific demographics. It's like how they put more mature jokes into some films for the parents' sake. And as for the looking at boys and lusting after the boy band plot, come on. I feel like most girls I knew in high school would definitely connect with this. And it doesn't take a lot of critical thinking to assume that guys can do that too. Just because not every guy stares at other guys like that doesn't mean you feel like you shouldn't understand it. I mean, I guarantee that if you're straight, you have simply done the opposite with your friends. You've talked about girls at school you find hot, or singers, or models, or actresses. It's not like this is some alien planet. Girls and guys are the same species. Their experiences in this sort of thing is different, yes, but they have a lot of similar elements that overlap and link together. So really, when people say, oh, I couldn't connect with this film at all. There was nothing in it for me. I just can't understand because every film, every single film has at least one tiny thing for everyone to latch onto. Well, at least every Pixar film. And this is no exception. And honestly, it feels like the majority of the reasons as to how it's too narrow are not thought out properly or are lazy excuses to hide the fact that you can't connect with Chinese immigrants or women. So that's pretty dank. But anyway, these have just been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. So bring on the salt. I'm not afraid.